Thanks very much. Um, this is a pretty straightforward talk. I just want to try to uh, impart a few tips on um, how, to, how do you use screws during uh, placement of sockets and why you might want to consider doing it more often. Um, these are my disclosures and don't have much to do with this talk. So the first question is, you know, do we really need screws? I mean, everybody's in a hurry now. We want to try to get more cases done, move along. People are getting rid of drains and everything else they can think of that uh, slows them down even 30 seconds. So do we really need to be using screws with our total hip replacements for primary surgery? Well, I'll put it to you that um, actually socket revisions and failures are a lot more common than you might think from especially comments from the podium in some meetings. Uh, historically, this was driven by the poly that we had, but in these two papers from our place, uh, actually uh, pretty disappointing results of a lot of cup designs. This is every single cup done at Mayo Clinic over the time frame shown. Uh, and it was revealing that the very best cup was the very first one we used, the HG1. So all of the newer technology sort of fell short as far as durability for some reason. Um, and you say, well, it's a poly problem, but if you look at uh, recent uh, registry data from Australia, you can see there continues to be significant revision rates for uh, cementless hips. And it varies certainly by design, but the crosslink poly uh, is not a panacea. And so what's going on? Uh, we see early failures, and those of us with busy revision practices can tell you it's one of the most common things we see walking through the door. Sockets are falling out, moving around, flipping over, and going every which direction. And I think part of the problem is patients vary in terms of bone quality, and many times surgeons are caught intraoperatively not prepared for poor quality bone, and the fixation suffers. We're imperfect about deciding when we need to use screws. So can you get away without screws? Most of the time, the answer is yes. But do you, why would you want to? Um, is it really so important to save that minute or two or three? It's just like, you know, can you get away driving fast after a couple of drinks without your seat belt on most of the time? Hell yeah. I mean, go for it if you want to. But, uh, you know, uh, why would you want to? You know, uh, bad things happen. And, you know, you might have a wreck, and our job during surgery is to prevent our patients from having a wreck down the road someplace. And it's pretty easy to improve the durability of the surgery by adding screws with very little trade-off. Now, we make hemispherical cups work for the majority of patients in revision, and we'll talk about that in a subsequent session. And I think it's been aided by the use of highly porous metals. Should we be using these all the time in primary surgery? Well, I don't know, but I have trouble predicting ahead of time who's going to have poor bone and who's not. It's one more thing that improves fixation. If we can get the cost down, and they're becoming very competitive as more and more entries to the field occur, I think the routine use of these materials, there's an argument in favor of that. Um, so what about the screws? You need to use multiple screws when you have bad bone, when you're doing revisions, and I would put it to you in all of your primaries. And the reason is every primary case is a practice round for the hard cases you're only going to do infrequently during the year. And if you try to play golf twice a year, you're going to really not be very good. And the same way with doing tough revisions. But if you're putting screws in on a daily basis, you're going to get really good at it. So when the big round comes, you're going to be ready. And here's how you do it. Uh, anterior is to the left. Posterior is to the right. Proximal is up. Distal is down. So we're putting screws across the dome. We all know how to do that. But I'll tell you, posterior column screws and inferior zone three screws into the base of the ischium, I think are critically important to prevent the rocking of the cup that occurs when these things loosen before they roll out, which is the ro mechanism of failure of a lot of these sockets. They pivot on those dome screws. Remember, those screws are designed to allow you to put them in at an angle. And once they go in there, the cup can do the same thing against it. And you can go right down the posterior column, the base of the ischium, and there is a, whatever that is, 35 millimeter screw going on the base of the ischium. So yes, there is bone down there, but you have to put it where the bone is. It's an anatomic exercise, and you can learn that by looking at a pelvic model, by doing this frequently during primary surgery where you have normal anatomy, so when you have distorted anatomy, you can make the shot. And so this just shows how to do that. And you want to have a cross table lateral, looks like this, with an array of screws down to the inferior aspect of the cup. So you have optimized fixation, minimize the chance of loosening. It works in our clinical series, no aseptic loosening in a large series of both primary and revision cases. And I think every practice case can be a practice round for your next revision. So get out there and hit a bucket of balls, guys, before you go out on the course, okay? Thanks very much.